pro tip for when you're doing an induced protein expression in bacteria, take a sample pre-induction before you add the IPTG to tell the bacteria to make the protein, and then post-induction, once when you let them make the protein and then you go to harvest the cells, take a sample of that. Now run those two samples side by side on an SDS page gel, and you should be able to see an appearance of a new band in the post-induction sample that wasn't there in the pre-induction sample, and that corresponds to the size of your protein um, compared to the latter. And so here is how you do it in practice, super duper simple, and it can save you a lot of time um, if you then were to not do that and then try to purify a protein that isn't actually there. Purifying a protein can be a lot of work and can also be really expensive as I'm learning when trying to order supplies for my lab. So you want to make sure that you're not wasting that time and energy trying to purify something that wasn't even expressed. The way that you can check for this is by running a gel on samples taken before you induced, so before you started expression by adding IPTG, as well as after you induced and you expressed it for a while. If you run these samples on an SDS page gel, you should see the appearance of a band of interest that is in the post-induction sample, but not in the pre-induction sample. And this band should correspond to the expected molecular weight. If you're using a system like a T7 system, where basically in this case, you have your gene under the control of a T7 promoter, which it doesn't have to share with the bacterial's own um, messenger RNAs, in that case, you can get a really high overexpression. So you can get about like 50% of the proteins being made um, have being the protein of your interest. And so you get this really nice fat band. In other cases, if you're using a weaker promoter, which you might want to do if your protein is say toxic to the cell um, or for other purposes, so you, it needs longer to fold, this sort of thing. You don't want to, to try to stress the bacteria out by making too much of the protein and then making a bunch of not so great protein if you want smaller amounts of uh, more soluble, better protein. You can use a lower expression. So but in that case, you wouldn't get as dark of a band, but you should still hopefully be able to see the appearance of a new band at the right size. And so this is what I'm hoping to see when I run my gel today. Now, in terms of the practicality of running these gels, Basically what I do is before I induce the cells, so you should be checking, monitoring the OD over time, seeing how these cells are growing um, in order to know when to induce them. And before I go and induce them, I take a mill of the media, of the culture. And I do this right before I'm about to induce it because when you induce it, you're also like stopping the growth. And I wanna make sure that I have like roughly equal amounts of cells before I, in my pre-induction sample and my post-induction sample. Um, so I take a mill at that point, and then I'm also going to take a mill right before I harvest it. So right before I spin all those cells down, I'm going to take a mill of that media. In both of these cases, what I'm going to do is at the time I take the samples, I'm going to centrifuge it. And just in like a, one of those little like um, bench top micro centrifuges at top speed for about 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be too exact. Um, sometimes if I'm in the middle of other stuff, I'll just set it to hold and that way I don't forget about it. Um, and if I do forget about, or if I do forget about it, it'll still have pelleted out and not resuspended. Um, because at the same time that it's spinning down, I'm gonna also be working on harvesting and things like this, um, and more inducing. So you spin those down and then you remove the liquid media because what we want is the pellet, which has the cells in it. Now, what we really care about is the proteins inside of that pellet. And so we're gonna need to lice open the pellet. And so, to lice open the pellet. We're not gonna do a whole fancy dancy thing like we do when we do a whole um, lysis from the giant pellet. Because we have such a small little thing, all we have to do is resuspend it in our SDS page sample buffer, um, which basically it has a detergent in it, typically SDS or Laurel um, or LDS, Laurel dodecyl sulfate. And when we heat it up, um, and it'll help with the detergent, it's gonna help lyse the cells. So the cells are gonna break open and then that detergent's gonna coat those proteins and then we can run them on our gel. But we don't want to get all that clumpy membrane and stuff run on our gel because we're not gonna be doing any sort of like big centrifugation step to remove it. Instead, we're just gonna do a little centrifuge, just like typically just do like one of those like pulse centrifuges, just spin it for just spin it briefly. Um, you wanna get that heavy stuff to the bottom. And then when you load, make sure that you're not loading from the very bottom of the tube, instead load from like the soluble stuff on top. And typically I load about five microliters of the supernatant 
sometimes if you're not exactly sure, uh, what I'll do is I'll run a couple of um, lanes with different amounts of supernatant because sometimes it can be like overloaded or underloaded. Um, and also this is going to help you when you're trying to compare between lanes, see if there's like a faint band, does it still look that faint in this lane too? Or is it just kind of like a trick of the eyes or a problem with the loading of that lane? So because you took the same amount of sample pre-induction and post-induction, you should have roughly similar amounts. Um, if you don't, you can also, um, or you can also just like test this by measuring the protein concentration and normalizing between the two. Or sometimes it doesn't really matter exactly how whether they're equal amounts total, because you can compare between the, what you're trying to do is compare between the two and look for the presence or absence of uh, the presence of a new band. Um, and so if it's a band that wasn't there before, then it doesn't matter if there was a little bit more in that lane or whatever, it'll be the same. And you can also compare between the other proteins to try to see, okay, well, this one, this one's a little lighter here, um, but so is that one. And so maybe I just loaded less here, um, but this one still looks darker. Um, so basically you just have to kind of um, analyze the gel, however best makes sense. Now, sometimes, so ideally you take that one mil sample pre-induction and you take a one mil sample at time of harvest and that's what you're running. Now, say you forget. Well, if you forgot when you were harvesting, what you can do is you can just take your pipette tip and take a little bit of that pellet after you pellet it um, and try to make it match kind of the size of the pellet from the other one. In this case, you're probably not going to have equal amounts. And so what you you might want to do is do go ahead and resuspend your resuspend your sample um, in just like water or buffer and then um, and then try to quantify it and then add your sample loading buffer to equal amounts of both of them. Or you can just kind of wing it and just compare between the two lanes, even if they don't have the same amount. If you forgot to take the pre-induction sample, well, now things are a little harder. If you, if you, if you like realize right away, what you can do is you can go and you can take that, go ahead and take that pre-induction sample, which is basically like at time of induction, like right, 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 post-induction. Um, at this time, the bacteria won't have had enough time to like have gone and start making much of the protein. So as long as you spin that down and you freeze it right away, you should be okay. Then use that as your um, pre-induction sample. That's not technically pre-induction, but is practically pre-induction. If you realize a couple hours in, still go ahead and take one, take a sample. Um, you should still see a lighter band there than in your later sample, and it's better than nothing. But if you don't remember until the time post-induction, um, well, now you're kind of out of luck. You can still look for the presence of a band of the right size, but you won't know if it was there in the pre-induction as well. So you might want to like make a note for yourself, put a post-it on your IPTG stock or something, like take pre-induction sample. Um, yeah, because it's very easy to forget, especially when you're in the midst of a bunch of experiments. And um, yeah, it's just easy to forget those things. So that's the basics of checking for expression. If you don't see expression, um, you can always troubleshoot, try maybe changing your IPTG concentrations, your induction time, um, your cell type, all of these various things. And if you're doing it a couple times and you, you see like a really faint band and you're not sure if it's your protein, you might want to go ahead and do a small scale purification um, just to see if it really is, if there is any there, um, or maybe run a Western blot to see if it is expressed, if you have an antibody, um, say for the tag on your protein or for your protein itself. And I have a whole post on how to troubleshoot expression and things like this that I'll direct you to. But hopefully you don't need to worry about that and you get a nice strong band like this, and then you can go ahead and proceed with your protein purification. You can also do this at like um, small scale. If you're trying to optimize your conditions, do like small scale with different conditions. So test the pre and post induction. When you find the one that seems to work the best, then go ahead and try to scale it up. Although be aware that not everything always scales up as nicely as you would hope. But speaking of hoping, I hope that this post helped you. And remember to take those pre and post induction samples. Um, and you can just stick them in the freezer, by the way, um, so you don't have to run your gel right away, especially when you're taking that sample pre-induction. Just go ahead and make sure that you are freezing it um, fairly quickly. You can do this before or after you prepare your the SDS page sample. Typically, I just freeze the pellet, and then I prepare my samples at the same time the next day before I go and run the gel. But you don't want to let them like keep growing and dying and stuff in the, in the tube. 
and the protease is digesting things and all that stuff. So you just want to freeze things that they are. So hope that helped.